Hey, hi, good morning. Welcome to Samadhi Game. We are uh, going to dig some sound today. The idea of digging sound is the tantra of sound. It is the real thing. It's the webbing, the the uh, warping and woofing of sound through creation, the bringing of it into reality, into this earth, rather than just leaving it in heaven. And so was created Samadhi Game, Manifesto of Enlightenment. Come with me. We're going to put the Samadhi Game Manifesto of Enlightenment up on the screen here for you all to see. And you can read along with us and do a little warping and woofing. This tantra, this tantra, this tantra of enlightenment. This tantra of sound. Bringing sound, what was not heard, making it heard. We do it all the time. We are constantly trying our best to find a way of bringing something of value into this planet Earth, of giving our gift gone. It's what we do. And we can practice that by reaching into the deepest part of ourselves, down deep into that heart, and finding that heart, and then externalizing it as sound, as inspirational radiance around us. Bring that heaven to Earth. Bring this tantra, this tantra, this tantra of sound, this webbing, that's what Tantra means. It means this webbing, this warping and woofing of sound into the planet, making something happen because of the sound, this first impetus, the sound, the vak, the word in the beginning. And so we take these words, this warping and woofing of ideas and sounds about infinity, about eternality, about the truth of our being at its core, and we say them. And as we say these words, they become more real. They become more attenuated in our consciousness so that we can see and be more of it. It's really not a big secret. It's not a real big um, uh, concept that we have to get over. Constantly, we're being bombarded with sounds of, of a certain nature that want us to follow into its groove. Let's dig on the sounds of enlightenment. Take a few moments and dig on these sounds rather than the sounds of politics or the sounds of survival or the sounds of, la of relationship. We dig on the sounds of the eternal sound, the soundless sound, which we talked about in yesterday's, excuse me, the day before yesterday's broadcast, this soundless sound and making the sound of it. So we're going to do it again today, bringing Samadhi Game Manifesto of Enlightenment to the fore, putting it on the screen for you to read, and then we'll go ahead and read it with gusto. That's right, with gusto. Here we go. This is the opening pillar of light, the pillar of the world. Come with me. Let's sing it. Let's make that sound. Let's invoke the presence of that samadhi, that true self who we are, and bring it out into the world powerfully. Sublime I am, samadhi that I am enfolding me now in that mighty, magic, electronic pillar of cosmic light substance. My identification with its magnificent humility and thoughtful creativity, so powerful and complete, that I artfully and magically alter every polarity with healing unity. Now remember, you're saying these ideas for yourself so that you might actually live into them at some point during this day. We're setting a matrix. And because we've set a pattern, it will draw more of itself. That uh, powerful and complete, that artful and magical idea. That artful, magical thing that's going to happen to you today because you took some time to sound a sound and create a resonance that goes out and begins to establish a matrix, a mandala of light around you, even out to eternity. My identification with its magnificent humility and thoughtful creativity, so powerful and complete, 
that I artfully and magically alter every polarity with healing unity. Within this majestic pillar of light blazes that love as the violet compassionate flame. Enter and around my etheric, mental, emotional, and physical bodies, effortlessly dissolving, consuming, transmuting, and reconciling the dualities of my human ego, charging my world and all I contact with a tangible substance, living awareness and conscious activity, the presence and superconscious samadhi of all enlightened beings, liberated and ascended masters, seeing, feeling, and hearing this light as it shines, radiates, and resonates within me as a visible pillar of the world. Stabilized, supported, and sustained by the brilliant, elegant one, and infinitely sensitive to that invulnerable state of divine I am Samadhi. Now we could go, and go ahead and say the Om, but we're not finished yet. We're going to take this mantra two times more through. Each time we take the mantra and sound that sound, we can dig deeper in its groove. We can dig that sound. We can dig it really deeply. Enjoy its pattern. Enjoy its promise. Its promise of enlightenment. Come on, let's go ahead and say this samadhi, this promise of enlightenment. Sublime I am Samadhi that I am, enfolding me now in that mighty, magic, electronic pillar of cosmic light substance. My identification with its magnificent humility and thoughtful creativity, so powerful and complete, that I artfully and magically alter every polarity with healing unity. Within this majestic pillar of light blazes that love as the violet compassionate flame, enter and around my etheric, mental, emotional, and physical bodies, effortlessly dissolving, consuming, transmuting, and reconciling the dualities of my human ego, charging my world and all I contact with the tangible substance, living awareness and conscious activity, the presence and superconscious samadhi of all enlightened beings, liberated and ascended masters, seeing, feeling, and hearing this light as it shines, radiates, and resonates within me as a visible pillar of the world, stabilized, supported, and sustained by the brilliant, elegant one, and infinitely sensitive to that invulnerable state of divine I am Samadhi. And a third time through, we'll go to the top. Sublime I am Samadhi that I am, enfolding me now in that mighty, magic, electronic pillar of cosmic light substance. Now just pretend for a moment that what you're saying is absolutely true. Give it the benefit of the doubt. Have a little faith. And let this mantra, this miracle, this perfection of samadhi begin to intertwine tantrically through your consciousness, down through the neurons, warping and woofing through your consciousness, your body, your emotions, your mentality even your etheric body surrounding you, resonating out in a resonant waveform through the world, out into consciousness all around the planet. And by your doing this, you're doing it not only for yourself, but for the other. And that means the other and your neighbor, the other as your lover, the other as the other country, the other candidate, the other migrant, the other immigrant, the other, the other. You're doing it for yourself and for us all because we are standing in a conscious web of oneness. And that web that we create creates more and more of that oneness in the physical octave if we choose to do so. So let's go ahead and give it again. Enfolding me now in that mighty, magic, electronic pillar of cosmic light substance, my identification with its magnificent humility and thoughtful creativity, so powerful and complete that I artfully and magically alter every polarity with healing unity. Within this majestic pillar of light 
blazes that love as the violet compassionate flame in through and around my etheric, mental, emotional, and physical bodies, effortlessly dissolving, consuming, transmuting, and reconciling the dualities of my human ego, charging my world and all I contact with a tangible substance, living awareness, and conscious activity, the presence and superconscious samadhi of all enlightened beings, liberated and ascended masters, seeing, feeling, and hearing this light as it shines, radiates, and resonates within me as a visible pillar of the world. Now, in those schools of enlightenment that counsel deep, silent meditation, there is the hearing, the sounding of sounds, the, the ringing of bells, the, the sounding of trumpets. There are these sounds, these vibrations, these tones that we feel, these auric emanations. Stabilized, supported, and sustained by the brilliant, elegant one, and infinitely sensitive to that invulnerable state, of divine I am Samadhi at the core of all sounds of all frequencies of existence is that ground of being that I am Samadhi, that invulnerable place of existence, of beingness. And as we come from there, nothing can assail us. We stand immovable, solid as a rock on this invulnerable state of I am Samadhi. And now, because we've gotten here, we've come to this point, we can actually now close this with the sounding of that soundless sound, that vak, that word, that om, that comes to us from the east and pours into the west as the amen, that sounding syllable which takes us all the way to the heart of the great central sun, the great magnet of divine love. resonance through your body. We can give these mantras as a mechanical way of giving them, or we can make them real. We can feel the eternity of Om pouring through us, and it can have its effect in our lives like none other. Let's really bring about some change and give that Om again. Feel that resonance throughout your being. This sounding of the tantra, this tantra, this tantra of sound. This bringing from the divine, from the heaven world into the physical octave, the ideation of perfection. And then holding it there despite the dual human ego saying, oh no, you have more to do here with me. I have you clutched in my arms and I will not yet let you go. You have to come back, says that dual human ego. And just for moments we arise out of that, that push and pull, that cross current of the dual human ego and we stand ourselves in that shashumna, that central, rail, uh, that central pole, pillar of enlightenment that runs from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet, really where there, all, there is reconciliation of all duality in that soundless sound, that presence of samadhi, which is a present reality now. We're not waiting for anything to happen. We're not waiting to go to a cave in India 
or to a great cathedral in the United States of America and listen to a great sermon by someone. We're doing it right now. Samadhi, at hand. Right now, here, present. No more waiting. We live in eternity now. Eternity is my home. I do all that is necessary to actualize this ever-fresh realization and organize my life around it. Eternity is my home. I do all that is necessary to actualize this ever-fresh realization and organize my life around it. Eternity is my home. I do all that is necessary to actualize this ever-fresh realization and organize my life around it. The divine it. The divine that. That same fire of consciousness that Moses saw in his cave And where was he in that cave? Was he in Egypt? Was he on Mount Sinai? We have a cave right here in Sama at Sunny Mellow. It's right up the, the mountain here from us. It's uh, just um, behind our property in the cliffs. And uh, oftentimes we'll go there and we'll sit there in that cave and meditate in the earth. From the earth element of our, our root chakra to the beautiful crown chakra above all of our chakras held together by this elevator of consciousness, the shashumna, this rod of power, this pillar of life that runs down the middle of us. And we do this thing called the reconcili reconciliation of opposites. I'd like to take us through a a process that we have with Samadhi Game. In chapter 2 of Samadhi Game, we do a process called Enlightenment with Squares. This Enlightenment with Squares process helps us to reconcile the dualities of our existence. I'll write it down and I'll show you what I mean. We're talking about the Tantra, the Tantra, the Tantra of enlightenment. There are schools, and many of them, and probably the most prominent in this day of enlightenment that say no drugs, no alcohol, no sex, no cursing, and all of those things, which is a good idea, actually. <laughs> and so is Samadhi Game in that realm. But the idea is that duality, the, the, the idea that actually transcends this thought for enlightenment is that everything on this planet is built out of duality. The pluses and minus, the lights and the darks. And if we only focus on that light side of our enlightenment, we are by law going to get bitten by our dark side. It's just how it is. We have to experience both sides of a, of a frequency of existence to bring it into reconciliation. And so before that happens, we can put some energy into the understanding of that duality. And in that understanding of that duality, consciously, by offering it up to the great divine, we can bring some kind of conscious reconciliation to it. And because of that, we may not have to undergo the experience of the opposite side. We can just maintain our course through the joyousness and the bliss of living and be free of having to have that karma come around and bite us in the ass. So this is how you do it. You take a piece of paper, you write down a line down the middle and a line across the, across the other middle from up and down. And then you write desire for and the fear of blank, then the, the bottom desire for and fear of blank. And I chose today selfishness and altruism. 
selfishness and altruism. Selfishness being that path that most of us recognize as that tantric path of having to experience the complete fullness of pleasure of some kind, whether it be smoking or sex or whatever. And because of that, we, we, we get selfish. We want to feel, we want to see, we want to have that, that taste. And oftentimes we think that, and in most, as I said earlier, most of our enlightenment uh, paths are, are, are rejecting that side of this duality and concentrating on the desire for altruism. Giving joyousness, giving the gift. We talk about it here in Samadhi Game. Giving our gift. It's a very altruistic and beautiful thought pattern. But we have to be aware of that selfish side and we can't think of it as only a negative because there are things that we get out of it. And the artful and magical use of consciousness means that we use all the frequencies of existence to paint a picture, to create a story of our life that has juice in it. All great pieces of art, all great pieces of music, are great because they address both sides of the equation. All great literature paints this incredible flux. And because of that, we're completely enraptured by it. We wouldn't be if it left out the other half of the equation. And so with Samadhi Game, we want to bring the other half of the equation, the Tantra, the Tantra, the Tantra of sound, into the picture here and understand that all the frequency of existence are equally manifest in this realm of God. The sun shines brightly on all my children, all my frequencies of existence. That one sun, that neutral witness, sees all and enjoys all, including the selfish aspects. So let's go into it for a moment. If you happen to be joining us online in Samadhi Game, uh, at Samadhi Game at Ustream. You can go to either samadhigame.com to join us online. Right on the front page of samadhigame.com, you'll find us streaming right now. You can also go to ustream.tv and type in Samadhi Game. If you do it there, you can sign in with it. It's a social streaming site. And as you sign in there and you like and follow Samadhi Game on ustream.tv, you'll get notified every time we go live, which is on, on these impromptu broadcasts, if you like that. And remember, we also have archives, and you can find our archives at samadhigame.com, uh, samadhigame on ustream.tv. You can find our archives on Facebook, on our Samadhi Game tribe page under, under the Ustream uh, link. There's a lot of different ways. Anyway. So here we are, the desire for selfishness. The desire, what do you get out of being selfish? You get increase. We get, um, we get uh, power. We get, uh, what do we get? We get um, uh, uh, control. We get, um, we get uh, uh, pleasure, maybe. Yes. We get... Um, we get uh, uh, adulation, maybe. All these things you get, you can go down the line and you can say, if I'm selfish, what happens? What's the payoff? Selfish, we get to, uh, to accumulate. Wealth. There's things that you can get out of it. The fear, and then you have to also look at the other side of selfishness. What is it that repels us from selfishness? This is like a bar magnet, a plus at the top end and a negative at the, at the, negative end, at the bottom end. The plus at the top end both repels and attracts. So like selfishness, it both repels and it attracts. It attracts us. That's why we are it at times. We think we'll get something from it. The fear of selfishness is that we'll be thought of badly. We will be, be criticized. We'll, uh, the fear of being selfish is we'll be alone. We'll be uh, hated. And of course, um, 
uh, will be uh, criticized, condemned, uh, will be selfish, will be um, uh, weighed down. So you can see there's there's negatives as well. And if you're in a group setting and you go into this particular uh, enlightenment with square process, everyone can begin to uh, give ideas of what it is that they get out of selfishness and which they don't get out of selfishness. The desire for altruism. We go to the other side of the equation now. We go down to, and we start to fill in. You can see I'm filling in these frequencies. Each of these are frequencies of existence. And these frequencies of existence, we're either attached to them or detached from them. If we're attached to them, then they're going to give weight to this particular side of the, of the enlightenment with squares process. And as we get more weight, we're going to be tending to live in this and be seen and perceived as this or this, one way or the other. The desire for altruism is the desire to give, to... Altruistic is all you also to get, to get a response, positive response, to get uh, love, to receive uh, what you, out of altruism, when you give something to someone else, you receive smiles. I mean, something that simple, to receive a smile, to, to live in gratitude, to, uh, to re release things to unweight you can say the same thing in different words each time you say something of the same type of vibration you're actually entering into it with a slightly different frequency i don't know if you've all seen those uh, uh rife therapy machines they they uh, you can dial in different frequencies in order to and then they put a couple of pads on your body wherever they put them they put two pads so the frequency can be uh, broadcast through your body and the idea of it is that certain frequencies have the ability to uh, shatter the matrix of certain bacteria viruses uh, uh, pathogens of different kinds and so these frequencies all have, these are all slightly different frequencies. And as we change their mix, uh, we can change the way our consciousness either rises or falls in this neutral witness, which is the shashumna of our being. We can also act as an artistic, creative member of this planet and give something very wonderful that will enlighten people and and hold them at a, a a broad with a broad hug rather than something very narrow the more broad the more far, the farther out we have conscious awareness of this duality acting the broader is our hug of the heart of the neutral witness it's also more dangerous, of course, as we go out on this spectrum of duality. We can get caught in a lopsided seesaw and get caught there for embodiments. So the idea is to come back into this neutral witness, become a master of all these frequencies of existence, and live so powerfully that, and, and so adventurously, so tantrically, that we can warp and woof altruism and selfishness just at the right time to create just the right environment for the just the specific situation that requires just a specific uh, frequency, just like the Rife therapy machine and it needs the exact frequency in order to change a specific bacteria and genetic paramutation of that bacteria which is existing within the person. And so you become master, you become a adept at finding frequency. And that takes volition, that takes will, that takes power. Let's go into the, the fear of altruism. Well, I'll just lose too much. Uh, it's just overwhelming to have to give so much. Uh, I'll be, I'll be uh, drawn thin. I might, uh, I might uh, starve. Uh, I might, um, I might uh, uh, go broke. I might uh, uh, 
in that kind of feeling. So you go down the, the line with your uh, the altruism, the, the wanting the, this desire to give, it stretches you too thin. I said it another way, draws you too thin, but now stretches you too thin. Each of these words, each of these concepts is a frequency of existence that we hold an understanding of. And as we write them down on the paper, they become a little bit more tangible, which is why we write them. We can talk about them too, but as we put them into the paper, we start, excuse me, we start to see a matrix flush itself out. And we start to see the reality of the duality and how it functions on this planet and how even our best intentions are often selfish because we get something out of altruism. So selfishness becomes altruism. Altruism becomes selfishness. And so each of them, it's yay or nay. Please do not criticize or judge anyone in any way because of what they're doing, because they have entered into some aspect of existence that is very helpful for them in the moment. Let's go on and give some more um, the final thing. Selfishness and altruism are the ends of the spectrum. If we can define a word, one word, maybe two, that would bring reconciliation between selfishness and altruism. How can we be selfish and how can we be altruistic? What state of consciousness would allow us to be all things to all people? In, that, in a specific moment, in a specific set of coordinates for that moment, the specific needs of the moment, what is necessary right now? Maybe we could say poise. Let's say poise. I like to write it in the center, and after we write it in the center, I like to do a swirl representing this transmuting neutral witness that stands in the middle of all things and holds embodiment after embodiment. And finally, when the hold is strong enough, when the balance is made strong enough, when the, when the, the karma, karmic swirl is understood deep enough, finally, finally, we find ourselves free situated in that neutral witness of poise, one way of saying samadhi. Let's give ourselves now to heartfelt, tangible samadhi. Eventually, this, the reason that most religious paths, spiritual paths, I should say, they always, most of them dwell on this heart-centered consciousness because it is the center of this shashumnik force up and down the spine. It is the middle way that brooks both the physical aspects of our being and the more etheric aspects of our being, the higher chakras and the lower chakras, and actually brings us the tantra, the tantra, the tantra of sound. And I say it three times because I want it to be clear that we're bringing heaven to earth. We're warping and wolfing with every sound we utter, with every word we speak, this consciousness into a great matrix on this planet. So let's give this mantra now. Heartfelt, tangible samadhi. O oh, great spirit, O oh, mighty I am Samadhi at the center of all creation. Let me just... Center of all creation. Radiant with illuminating fire. O oh, heartfelt parent of all sons and sons. Pour forth that life-giving power and fan the spark of that divinity on the altar of my heart. Amplify and magnify this spark by the fire breath of the whole I spirit into the potent God of name that I am. Oh, the shimmering fountain of life that I hear, feel, smell, taste, and see within me. Move it over a little bit for you.
I choose this constant cascade of liquid light, actively receiving its shimmering direct of radiance, tangibly and powerfully manifest in my experience. I open the innermost temple of love within this evident, evident, celestial, cosmic fire. I manifest that life and light for our healing and regeneration, letting the breath, height, fullness, and crown of the solar radiance of the sun behind the sun appear. I stand forth, revealed it, and through me is the neutral witness that Christos, Krishna, Buddha, Pharaoh, Monarch, Divine Mother, Father, Sun, Conscious Awareness, all of these words, all the same, all the same idea, the heart-centered, neutral witness, awareness, this Christ, this Christos, this Krishna, this Buddha, live in it and you are that, just as much as was Jesus, just as much as was Buddha, just as much as was all the great ones who have ever walked this planet, John Smith down the street. I am the visible, audible, and tangible flame of eternal life. Breathing the center of the prana chief from the source to the root of my being, all the way down to the base of the spine chakra, all of our chakras, this holy, 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 this candlestick upon which are these beautiful spiraling vortices of light, all the way to the base of the spine, this beautiful, beautiful base of the spine chakra. It is created to bring the light all the way into the physical octave, this tantra, this tantra, this tantra of existence. Liquid rays of light flooding my chakras, seated upon their lotus thrones of love, molten gold of enlightenment, shivering this ascension up my spine, crowning my awareness of the diamond rays of attainment. Now let's go ahead and just practice this breath. We take this moment to follow that pathway that we have just etched with the sound of the soundless sound, the ideation of the pathway of this flow of grace from the top down, from the bottom up. Let's breathe in. And as we breathe in, that light goes down to the bottom. And as we breathe out, feel it shiver up the spine. You can place the tongue at the roof of the mouth. On the inhalation, that allows that light to flow down the front side of the body unimpeded by a space. It connects like connecting wires together and the current flows. And as you breathe out, do a little perennial kegel. And as you do that kegel, it bounces the light back up to the top of the head. So let's go, let's do it. Tongue at the top of the mouth, kegel at the bottom. And as you do this breath, maintain your poise. And in that poise, realizing the truth of how to balance selfishness and altruism. How to live tantrically in this physical world, enlightened in this physical world. Your awareness growing with each breath, each tension along the pathway of this breath dissolving before the rush of this light. Feel the joy of this light moving through your chakras. Don't hesitate to enjoy this flow, this tantra of sound. And now let's continue with our Maha Mantra Yana, speaking the words 
tantrically bringing that light into physicality all the way down the spine with the breath as the white fire being of my heart. I dynamically emanate and transmit this audible, tangible, fragrant, delectable, and visible substance of living samadhi as creativity and direction. I am a sun in the palace of a shining void, this temple a glistening world of infinite space, the process of my transformations sounding the melodies, harmonies, and rhythms of the great solar symphony. I am the dazzling flame of life, here and now, because I am nowhere else but everywhere forever. I am somebody's palpable joy, tactile glory, and felt perfection of boundless being. I am that, I am that, I am that. I am, and here we can make the Tantra come all the way into a new identity for yourself. I am the Ascended Master Gregory Donald Brinkley Living Super Yogi Brilliance. I now say it again, your name for you. I am the Ascended Master, Gregory Donald Brinkley, Living Super Yogi Brilliance. Why, anything less? I am the Ascended Master, Gregory Donald Brinkley, Living Super Yogi Brilliance. In embodiment, in embodiment, in embodiment. I am oneness lived. Now, I would like you to just re remember, think upon what it would be like if you were sitting quietly in silent meditation. Now, if you have done this mantra as I have done this mantra with power and volition, you'll find that your body is spinning, it's, it's scintillating. Your chakras are awake and alive and vibrating. They're vibrating all the way to the marrow of your bones. And as we sit now silently, you'll find that you're, 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 you have the ability to rock it like a spaceship into the farthest reaches of infinite void. Because you have brought that void into the ephemeral world, of tran the transitory world of this octave of existence, the changeful world of this world of form, of terra, you've become aware of its frequencies both left and right, up and down, and now you cantipult into void. It's lovely. It is a great awe. Another mantra, a great mantra, is just going, ah, 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 letting yourself flow in that samadhi. Why not? Why deprive yourself because of criticism, condemnation, judgment, the normal mundane footstool kingdom of the human mind that you must constantly be yoked to the frequencies of existence cycling round and round, but rather find yourself in that po poise of, ah. I'm taking us to a mantra in our second chapter. This is the mantra for enlightenment with squares process. We have the three coordinates. The three coordinates are selfishness, altruism, and poise, which allows us to pick and choose from any quadrant. And here is the mantra, we'll give it now. Oh, presence of a shining void. Eternity. Himalaya and mighty victory. That I am. We have to recognize and identify ourselves with great beingness, because we are. I hereby recognize the issue of selfishness as one pole of the dual human ego present, presently up for my understanding and transmutation. Let me move it along for you. And I choose to process this selfishness along with its opposite pole of duality, 
altruism. By witnessing this wheel of carbon and all of its subfrequencies, I have I have chosen of attraction or repulsion that have brought it into my existence. From that place of neutrality and reconciliation that I identify as poise. Take from me every state of mind, emotion, and outer experience, manifesting as all possible patterns of the dual human ego consciousness, including the desire for and the fear of selfishness, and the desire for and the fear of its opposite, altruism. And then here is some instruction, and that's what it looks like when you draw it. And then here we're going to continue on. Clear and reconcile all the varied frequencies of fear and desire, making up this specific square pattern of dual human ego consciousness, finding that balanced and ascended quality or perfect samadhi, including what we chose today to name samadhi, poise, that I may see more clearly and find my way home more easily. In great gratitude I give thanks, knowing that it is done. Transmute and bring forth out of every dual human ego condition in my experience that miracle, joy, mastery, victory, and all words for samadhi. Poise. I claim that samadhi of conscious balance, awareness, attainment, perfection, all words for samadhi. And poise as the only governing presence in my mind, my body, my feeling world, and every particle of my spiritual, sexual, social, recreational, romantic, personal, family, domicile, dietary, health, medical, career, financial, business, political, and legal affairs. Now that's Tantra, 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 warping and woofing this enlightenment through all aspects of existence and the affairs of every person seeking enlightenment throughout America and the world. Now, if you live in Croatia, you can say Croatia. No matter what my outer circumstance, this perfect state of samadhi is my poise, and there is my attention, my allegiance. And we can put our attention on poise. We can just say poise. Mantra poise, mantra, samadhi poise, and put our attention there. In a moment's notice, we can take ourselves back out of the, the push and pull of the dual human ego, back to poise, and make a decision about all that push and pull of the dual human ego, consciously, willingly, from the place of poise. As the joyous I am samadhi of poise, I hold all conditions of the dual human ego, including the fear and the desire of selfishness and altruism, purified, beautified, reconciled, and free from the wheel of karma, that the full glory of poise may pour forth and bless all mankind with whom I come in contact, especially, now you can name your loved ones and your enemies. Name them all. The more your enemies come into connection with this inner self, this eternal self, this golden man of the heart, this poise, this samadhi, this nirvana, this Christ consciousness, however the heck you want to say it, the less trouble you'll have with your enemy and the more love you'll have with your enemy. As the neutral witness, this Christos, Krishna, Buddha, Pharaoh, Monarch, Divine Mother, Father, Son, Conscious, Neutral Witness, Awareness, that I am. I awaken to, take responsibility for, and dis recognize dispassionately and enjoy all phases of the wheel of karma within the world of my immediate self and its reflection in others. What we see in others is what we are harboring within ourselves. What we fear about others is what we fear in ourselves. Let's use that mirror of consciousness nobly and forthrightly to come into an ab abundance of poise, an abundance of samadhi that we can share with everyone. And this tantra of enlightenment becomes a webbing of heart to heart across the face of the planet. I discipline myself to love. I love it. Where are we going to discipline ourselves to? Let's discipline ourselves to love, to really getting into the love. I'd like to invoke the presence now, consciously. We've spoken about it a little bit in past 
uh, sessions of Samadhi Game. But this idea of ascended beings, of angels, of archangels, the archetypal forms, the consciousness, the ideations, the angles of the angels, the angles of the consciousness of the mind of God. How can we draw that more closely to us? We can feel a devotion. We can allow ourselves to feel a friendship with a personalized form of that, of that impersonal idea of consciousness. And so we can choose East, West, doesn't matter what religious, spiritual doctrine you come from, Buddhic, Christic, Angelic, Greek, mythologically each of these archetypical forms and names used throughout history throughout our our world's striving have power because they've been used so much they carry a latent energy of power so we're gonna use Archangel Michael's name today we're gonna to call out to Archangel Michael we're going to humble ourselves before the massive weight of Archangel Michael's presence that surrounds all, that is, exists in all eternity, everywhere present in the mind of God, Archangel Michael. And so we call out that name, and that name brings its immediate responsiveness to us. So here is a mantra that brings Archangel Michael's presence into our life. Let's go. As Archangel Michael and Archei Faith, that second half of him, that feminine side of him, just like you have a feminine and masculine. Here, this great divine being, both masculine and feminine are typical forms. The all-powerful mighty I am, Samadhi that I am. I am the active power and supreme authority of Samadhi in my world. I am the context, the Samadhi, that is decisive. I release the blue lightning of 10,000 suns right now, I sweep into all astral and psychic opposition and human conditions of duality in my world, including the fears and the desires of and what we're working on today is selfishness and altruism, both poles of duality. And I dissolve, consume, transmute, and reconcile them right now in poise. I take command of all appearances of imperfection and unreality in my world. I blaze the full power of Samadhi of rainbow lightning into and around all seeming obstacles and opposition to the instantaneous manifestation of each and every inner and outer intention, meditation, prayer, rosary, puja, bhajan, mantra, however you want to say it, fiat and affirmation, I shall make today an absolute truth, the Dharma, the truth. The Dharma, the way, the truth, the life. And that's a powerful mantra. We've just invoked this presence as an assumptive technique. We say, I am that as well. I am that I am. I assume the presence of this being, this ground that resonates through me. How good it is. Let's put on more of these garments. This mantra here is called Garments of Immortality, and they still reside. We're going to put on more than just Archangel Michaels. Now we're going to call to other great beings and put their names into the mix. I put those names in gold and yellow color to emphasize that these are names that if you don't like them, change them. If you have someone, some way of saying God other than these names, some way of saying power, love, devotion, other than these names, use it which you have. The concepts apply still that those names that you pronounce as those that draw you into a higher state are just as valuable as the ones that we have written here. But come with me and say these names. You'll notice I have some initials at the end of this uh, in gold which is just to emphasize, I just put that there because those are names that are specific for me, that mean a lot to me in my path of enlightenment. And so I say those names 
to pull in the presence that I remember from those gurus, those teachers, those people that helped train me in a way of enlightenment that was very valuable to me. But I'm not going to say I'm here tonight. I just put them there so that you can see that they're there and you can do the same thing for yourself. Oh, discriminating I am, somebody that I am, as I am in concert with the ascended Claire de Lis, Lanello, Sir Laphalot, and Yogananda, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada and Hans Baba. Hans Baba is a, a, a guru in India that I met that I really enjoyed. He's a fun, fun guy. And I won't, that's all I'll say. Interesting guy. I invoke the presence of Archangel Michael and Faith. Elohim, Hercules, and Pirvati, Sanatka, El Moria, and the goddess of light. I manifest the full gathered momentum of the new blue lightning of holy will, the cosmic circle and sword of Kali and Astraea, the Archangel Michael, the lords of karma, the lords of the nine planets, the Navagrahas. And for those of you who are aware of astrology, this is the ancient Eastern technique of astrology, they call the Navagrahas, each planet having an archetypical, just like different movie stars have different archetypical remembrances in our consciousness. These planets have been given different archetypical energies that correspond with the energies of our chakras, the energies of our beings, and in those archetypical forms can draw us to a higher level of awareness. And legions of the elegant one and central sun. So we name legions that we don't even know the names of. Of the elegant oneness that is everywhere present. And that great central sun. I go forth with almighty protection, divine intercession, and direction. I am the answer to these my inner calls and outer calls. O majestic Christos, Krishna, Buddha, Pharaoh, Monarch, Divine Mother, Father, Son, Conscious Awareness, however you want to say it, that I am, and you can feel it, it's present in you now. Adorn me with the garments of immortality, the luster of reality, be it my decree. This, the hour of victory, manifesting as, and what did we say it was, this Samadhi today? Poise the love light of wisdom and power or its impostors of fear and desires of selfishness and altruism. Now here we go through those planetary archetypical forms. Jupiter's helmet and shield of faith to winged sandals of Mercury, Saturn's sacred spear of transfiguration, Mars' flaming sword of discrimination, Venusian angel's benefaction around me purposes purity, sun's solar armor bright, Reconciling lunar duality, I am impeccability titan. I've written in there those Hindu names, those Sanskrit names of, this, of those planets. In case you are versed in them, you can say those names too. Intentions, stream and banners, triumphs, trumpets, play forward, mighty legions of light, into the karmic axis of hungry ghosts, headless shadows fray in every unique individuality for each of us. Each of us were born under a different star. The whole kaleidoscope of stars showed a different pattern for you and you and you and you and me. And in astrology, there is a certain pattern that shows itself in every person's chart called Rahu and Ketu, which I, you can see I've written there. And that particular pattern where it shows up along the axis of the 12 zodiacs in your chart shows you the primordial duality that you came into this embodiment with that you needed to balance that you had attainment on that you needed more attainment on so it's a really cool thing if you have your Vedic astrology, if you know what it is and you know what Rahu and Ketu does but we all have this primary polarity, this primary karma that we're working through. So it's good to be aware of it. You don't even have to know the astrology. You just It just is. I use these just to focus the idea that we all have a primal idea. And if you look back through your life, if you do a historical timeline of your life, which is a good thing to do, sit down, 
chart out the events in your life and watch what you go through and, and what are important to you may not be the same thing as what's important to someone else, but a pattern will occur. Ideas and our typical forms that are forming your life, different polarities will come up. And that's your specific initiation. Engage the field of transmutation. Magnify reconciliation. Ere the dual human ego mastered. Victory's unity. Enlightenment ruling the day. These are all mantras that I'm giving here today. This, these mantras down the line here uh, to this presence of Archangel Michael. I'm going to take us to a mantra that was given to me through a dream. It's called Power Cry. In this mantra, the mantra is a, out, is a sketching, an outline of this particular dream. And it's a dream where Archangel Michael came and in his coming was a great clearing and a great expansiveness into the divine oneness. This is Marlena. <sighs> Say hi. <laughs> she loves the mantras. She loves the vibrations of them. So do we all. So let's give this mantra, this, this dream, this heaven made manifest, this heaven ideation brought to earth, this tantra, this tantra, this tantra of sound, etching, warping and woofing consciousness so that it becomes a matrix, a web through our beings and likewise through the beings of all others on this planet as well helping in a way to hold harmonies on this planet, this planet which is going through a great flux of enlightenment. And as that flux of enlightenment comes, so too upheaval to align itself with enlightenment. Let's go. Power Cry is the name of this dream made manifest. Say Archangel Michael and all will align to I am perfection, creative design. Archangel Michael, command prana now. Stand to attention, obey holy vow. Healing shock dies with sure, firm embrace. Faith and my purpose, our hearts interlaced. Open the door to infinite space. Silence, avoidness, transcendent grace. Mountains, oceans formed from within. And devotional splendor, I float, sail, and swim. As I gaze high to emptiness sky, out of blue ethers I hear power cry. I come to you, my child, my son. I lift up the broken to meet thee in one. Innocent youth, eternal youth, sword in hand I take command. Continence sweet, now we meet. Let's do it again. Say, Archangel, make it an oval align to I am perfection, creative design. Archangel Michael, command Prada now, stand to attention, obey holy vow. Healing shark dies with sure firm embrace, faith of my purpose, our hearts interlaced. Open the door to infinite space, silence, voidness, transcendent grace. Mountains, oceans form from within, under devotional splendor, I float, sail, and swim. As I gaze high to emptiness sky, out of blue with as I hear proper cry. I come to you, my child, my son, I lift up the broken to meet the other one. Innocent truth, eternal youth, sword in hand, I take command. Continent sweet, now we meet. Say, Archangel, make out an oval line to I am perfection, creative design. Archangel, make a command part and now stand to attention, a behold a vow. Healing shark dies with sure from embrace, faith of my purpose, our hearts interlace. Open the door to infinite space, silence, the voidness, transcendent grace. Mountains, oceans, from within and devotional splendor, I float, sail, and swim. As it gets high to emptiness, sky, out of blue breathers, I hear power cry. I come to you, my child, my son, I lift up the broken to meet the other one. Innocent truth, eternal youth, sword in hand. And I take command, continent sweet, now we meet. 
Say Archangel Michael the number the nine to I am perfection creative design. Archangel Michael could be brother now, stand to attention of behold a vow. He did not die to share from base, faith that my perfect heart into a lace. Open the door to infinite space, silence of no transcending grace. Mountains, oceans, from up within a double blender, I float and swim. As I gaze high to emptiness sky, out of the with this I hear proper cry. I come to you, my child, my son, they dip to the bug and they meet the other one. And isn't true, the eternal youth, sword in hand, I take command. Got it sweet, now we meet. And now to, for a moment, just feel that presence as though Archangel Michael were sitting in and about you. For a few moments, you can feel that, can't you? I think so. Let's end today's session with this mantra, let there be light. It's a fiat. It proclaims this tantra of enlightenment, this tantra, tantra, tantra of sound, this tantra, tantra, tantra of vak, this tantra, tantra, tantra of heaven on earth. Let there be light with Archangel's sight. Let there be faith Dharma and grace. Let there be power, true freedom to shower. Let there be joy, I am will and alloyed. Let there be health, I am wealth. Let there be light with archangel sight. Let there be faith, Dharma and grace. Let there be power, true freedom to shower. Let there be joy, I am will and alloyed. Let there be health, I am wealth. Let there be light with archangel sight. Let there be faith, Dharma and grace. Let there be power to your freedom to shower. Let there be joy. I am well unalloyed. Let there be health. I am wealth. I want to thank you for joining me today in this Tantra of Enlightenment. I want to thank you for coming. I want to thank you for taking the risk of entering into this world of enlightenment. It ain't an easy path. And buyer beware. If you decide to begin to invoke this light into your world, be ready for transmutation. Be ready because it comes. It is a world of flaming fire that you are invoking into your life. And that fire must have its way. This divine sacred fire carries with it the blueprint of your life. And wherever your life has gone out of alignment with that blueprint will come up as and for rectification. When you feel as though you've invoked enough and you need to stand back a little bit and let yourself come into balance with the new level of awareness that you have demanded of yourself through your invocation, then you pull back for safety's sake. You'll see stories in uh, the different literature of different saints and sages who have walked the path of enlightenment and the trauma and turmoil and upheaval that it's caused in their lives and in the lives of the planet. And so it goes. We all walk this, plant, this path of enlightenment one time or another and we all bear the burden of this light. This tantra. And then this time in our uh, evolution as a planet, it's not any longer uh, enough to invoke the light for yourself and to go into a deep meditation and find the joy and peace of that and then go about your normal life. But we are bringing that Tantra of enlightenment into this planetary body and allowing every aspect of our lives, every frequency of existence to rest upon the pivot of that samadhi that we know is the neutral witness, that Christos consciousness. All right. Enough said for today. We'll be back tomorrow, probably earlier tomorrow morning, uh, as there's a, quite a day ahead of me tomorrow morning as well. All right. Have a good day. Enjoy. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining Samadhi Game. Download it free at samadhigame.com. Bye. Mm -hmm.